from one server disaster to another. Let's see how badly this one can go. Well, this one doesn't have an Asus motherboard in it, so that alone is a significant improvement. Definitely gonna get fan mail for that comment. <laughs> oh, but anyway, as you might be able to tell, this is a Dell Precision 390. Looks to be in mostly intact, at least. Core 2 quad CPU, it's pretty much the same as the other one. It's a Q6600. And like I said before, people love to trash that CPU and call it a piece of junk, but... You know, even though you could get better Core 2 quads, for an LGA 775 quad-core CPU, it really wasn't too bad. Ooh, we'll pop the cover. Oh, it's gonna fall over. We have a look at the cover. You can see it's not exactly clean. I have no idea what that is, but I haven't been able to get it off. So, I don't know. Hopefully it's not dead things or something like that. Okay, let's take the camera off the tripod and have a little bit of an investigation. So, there's the massive CPU tower and cooling fan. At least it's got a grill on it. Some of these don't. and It's all too easy to stick your fingers in there and all of a sudden, almost get your finger amputated. Anyway, two hard drive bays. I have the caddies at least, so that should be easy enough to fix. I will have two hard drives in this machine. Looks like you actually could use IDE in this if you wanted to, so that's, that's not a bad proposition. Not that I'm going to. Anyway, this right here is actually a I don't know, this is call this a guide? It's meant for the uh, PCI Express video card slot, because you could put a pretty big card in this. Oops, it fell over. Yeah. There's your PCI uh, power right there. Two serial ATA connections. This is just some random piece of crap. I don't even know what this is. I think it's like an X1550 Radeon or something. Doesn't really matter. Four serial ATA ports. Are there any more? I thought there'd be a few more than that, but uh, no, it looks like there's only four. This one doesn't even have the uh, PS2. Actually, I think it's got PS2 on board, so that's why it wouldn't have it. But the little connection down there for the PS2 serial expansion. This thing keeps falling. We'll just leave it alone. Yeah, if we look at the back. No, oh yeah, no, there it is. PS2, parallel, serial, looks like four USB, maybe six USB, Ethernet, sound, there's the power supply up there, no onboard video, so you need to have the video card, which doesn't really sit in there very nicely, despite having a lock, evidently that doesn't work. This one's got a parallel ATA optical drive, which is interesting. I guess if you want a SATA drive, you'd have to plug in the adapter there to this little this little harness. Dell has a little special thing that you'd plug into that. Well, the parallel ATA one is fine. I'm going to have to upgrade this RAM, so I'm going to have to figure out what that is. And I'm going to have to get my OS install media going, because I'm going to be trying something new with this. You see, I've been stuck with Windows Server 2008 for a while, because for a while I thought it was the only thing that was going to be able to talk to my little machine over there, the Advantech, which is running Windows NT4. It will not talk to my Linux servers. But I was doing some testing, and it seems like it will actually talk to Windows Server 2016. So I'm going to try running that on this, and I guess we're going to find out together whether or not that is actually the case. If it is, then I could put this into service hopefully tonight. Or tomorrow. If it's not, then I'm going back to the drawing board. But I gotta get actually started doing a couple of things. Most notably, changing the RAM, putting the hard drives in place, and making sure it'll actually boot. Especially worried about this video card because I had to put the heatsink back in place, and I'm not sure it actually survived that little incident. Well, I am even so trusting of this thing that I put the side panel on. I'm sure, that was a bad idea. And I'm gonna regret that later. In fact, I may even regret it right now, because we are about to apply power. So, 
Oh yeah, check this out. We're moving on up. PS2 optical mouse baby. No longer have to worry about that mechanical thing and not tracking properly on my bed. I mean workbench. Okay, so let's juice this thing up. See what it happens to do. Probably kick the camera over in the process. I've left a pretty nice spark. Whoa! Can you stay on? Well, of course not. Fan ramped up like crazy. It's gonna post. Wow. Look at that. Nice. Is it gonna post? My monitor is doing strange things. No, it is not gonna post. Look at that. 715F913129AS05. Whatever that means. Probably a video card problem. <sighs> Do I have any AG, other AGP video cards laying around? I don't know. Well, I do, but I don't really want to use them in a server. What if I hit Control Alt Delete? What does it do? No, it doesn't work. Okay, well, let's hit the power. Power back on. Listen to those fans. That's awesome. Yeah, I think the video card is toast. Alright. Let me, uh, change the video card, I guess. Well, that was interesting. Of course, I had to change the video card. You saw that, that video was messed up. You couldn't even read what was on the display. So I had to do that. But I also had to change the RAM. So I didn't like the RAM or the video card. Theoretically, at least. It's still got 2 gigs of RAM in it. Of course, I'm going to make the assumption that it's still working. Can you go to the BIOS, please? Alright, wow, that's way off the screen. Alright, let's fix that. Okay, so at least we got a BIOS. Found out I won't be able to uh, put that image on a DVD for the boot server 2016, so I don't know what I'm going to do about that. You can go look up the service tag if you want. So you can actually read it. Let's try and get this to be a little bit more readable. Yeah, that's a little better. Assuming that video compression doesn't destroy it. Core 2 Quad Q6600. All of that. Shape. Dual interleaved on the RAM. 2 gigabytes. Could probably get it a little bit more than that. But, that is a start at least. PCI Info. It's got the VGA and everything else is unpopulated. The date and time is correct. So I don't need to replace the CMOS battery. Boot sequence, whatever. Drives. SATA 0. 80 gigabytes. So it is actually correct. Good. SATA 1 is off, SATA 2 is off, and SATA 3 is on. So I'm going to have to fix that, because that will drive me nuts. Parallel ATA 0 is on. That is off, because there's nothing there. Alright, AHCI is turned on. Smart reporting is on. Onboard devices, integrated NIC. It's got PXE booting. Don't really need that, at least not yet, but I'll leave that alone. Integrated audio, USB... No boot. That's kind of a useless feature, but... Oh well, whatever. I could see times when that might actually be useful in a business environment, but... Anyway, front USB ports are on. LPT is in PS2 mode. Probably should change that to ECP. Address probably doesn't matter. DMA is off. Why is that off? Change it to DMA1. How about that? Probably find there's a conflict somewhere in the system. Auto should be good. UART power down. Let's just say no on that. PS2 mouse is on. See there, it's got a light. So it's working. Video. Primary video. PEG. PCI Express Graphics. Alright. 
Performance, multiple cores on, speed step on, virtualization on. Limit CPU ID off. Hard drive acoustic mode. I usually set that to performance. Security off, 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 off. Password changes unlocked, yes. Chassis intrusion is on but silent. Intrusion alert. Acknowledge you. Alright. TPM security off. Execute disable on. Good. CompuTrace is off. Good. Power management. AC. Oops. AC recovery. I usually set that to on for servers. Auto power on. That's kind of junky. Low power mode. Sure. Remote wake up, suspend mode, maintenance, there's service tag, ASF mode, event log, let's have a look here, look at all the chassis intrusion messages. Apparently this thing had ECC memory in it at some point. Multi-bit ECC error, DIM2. Memory size different. Whoops. A. Hey. Maybe there were a couple of... Oh, that was when I was testing it. That was uh, way down there, that last one. That was when I was testing it in my office. 2019. Chassis intrusion, keyboard error, memory size different. Nice. Go to page down. Look at all the chassis intrusion errors. And a keyboard error. Maybe that wasn't when I was testing it. I don't know. And then, of course, today, chassis intrusion, whatever. Mark all entries. Alright, everything is red. Post behavior. Fast boot on. Numlock on. Hot keys, fine. Keyboard errors, nobody cares about those. Okay. So, that should be pretty much it. Now, I'm curious. Is there anything on this hard drive? That'll be the last thing that we're going to end up doing in this video. Really would have liked to get this going, but since I don't want to bother myself with trying to get a USB stick going at this particular hour, well, I won't. No fan speed control and setup, though. That kind of sucks. So let's see, is there anything on the hard drive that is actually bootable? Anything that will hang the system? Hmm. Let's see. I'm going to hit F12, see if I can boot to that. Uh, there might not be, you know? Thinking about it. Onboard SATA hard drive. Onboard USB CD ROM. Network. Hard drive diagnostics. Boot to your utility partition isn't going to work. Let's go to the hard drive. See what happens. Yeah, it just locks up the system, so... Obviously not. Alright, well, I think that's going to conclude the video. I don't want it to get too long and too boring, so... Thank you for watching. If you've got any comments, feel free to leave them down below. And this is CP666 signing off, and I hope to see you next time. Till then.